What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to hardwire a dash cam and make it look clean because I'm sure you've all been in your friend's cars and you see these wires dangling from the roof all the way plugged into the cigarette lighter. And honestly, it's not a good look and there's definitely some better ways to do it. Now today's video isn't sponsored by Fiofo, but they did send me out a camera to try, which is super cool. So shout out to them for setting this up. Now, funny enough, I already have a Fiofo dash cam installed installed in my girlfriend's car, which we're gonna be upgrading this one today. But not only do I have one in my Mazda, but I also have one in my RS3. As you can see, I also have another VOFO dash cam right here in my RS3. So it's just pure coincidence that I already have Yofo cameras installed in both of my cars, but that should tell you all you need to know about how much I like these cameras. Now, I wanna show you what they were able to send me, and this is their newest technology they have so far. So opening this up, the first thing they obviously sent me is the new and improved dash cam here, which is the A119 Mini 2. This is their newest 2K HDR, Sony Starvis 2 sensor, multiple exposure HDR with Wi-Fi and voice control. They pretty much have everything you need in your dash cam here. And the reason I like these so much is their sleekness, which I'll show you in a second. But besides the dash cam itself with the Wi-Fi app Bluetooth capabilities, they also sent me the dash cam here, the hardware wire kit, which I'm gonna show you how to install today. And I'm also gonna show you how to install it if you have an aftermarket stereo, which is a bit easier. But they've then also sent me the circular polarizing lens filter. I'll show you how to put that on, as well as the Viofo SD card and the SD card adapter to plug it into your computer and see what you know, accidents you've recorded. Now I'm gonna explain and show you guys the three different ways to hardwire your dash cam and make it look clean. Now, the first way is going to be plugging it in. If you have an aftermarket uh, radio, usually in the back, you can plug in the USB behind this. And then when you turn your car on, the dash cam will immediately turn on. And when you turn your car off, when the radio's off, the dash cam will turn off as well. You can also, you know, cleanly hardwire it and plug it into your USB cigarette lighter here. And the third way is using the hardware wire adapter kit and putting it in the fuse box. And I'll show you that too. So either way, you can ultimately get a clean looking dash cam installed in your car. Now, unfortunately, the new dash cam that I got from Viofo is a USB type C. And the old dash cam that I have is a micro USB, which means I now have to take out this radio, remove my old dash cam and reinstall a new upgraded wire. So I'm gonna show you how to take this all apart first and get it all ready and hardwired correctly. First thing I did was just remove the old dash cam and its mount. I used a plastic pry tool and some rubbing alcohol to remove any leftover glue that might've been left on the windshield. Next, I needed to remove the long micro USB wire because I will be upgrading this with a USB type C. Removing the radio actually on a 2010 Mazda 3 is quite simple. You just pop out the air vents with a pry tool and then there's literally just two screws that hold this aftermarket radio in place. So taking a break from the disassembly process of the radio, which is pretty much done, I wanna unbox the Viofo A119 Mini 2 for you guys and also get the correct wire that's needed to reinstall and hardwire this dash cam. Now it's really cool because this kit and this dash cam comes with pretty much everything and anything you need, uh, which is awesome. You can see it's beautifully packaged here and check out how nice and sleek this camera looks here. Check this thing out. It's super tiny and the way it mounts, it's like you don't even see it there because it's flush with everything else hanging up in your car. But what's also cool is this thing comes not only with Wi-Fi capabilities, Bluetooth to connect to the app on your phone, it also has a GPS module in it, which means it knows your location, which is good if you need to fight a ticket, pull over, get pulled over from the police, so on and so forth here. So the fact that it has a GPS module allows you to track your speed, it tracks the speed 
that you're going and where you are too, which is really cool if you ask me. And this is a separate installation. You don't need this, it comes off, but you can mount this first and then it slides in here. Now this comes with a USB-C and we need to put in the micro SD card into here, but those are separate. But beyond that, I wanna show you what else it comes with. At the bottom of the box here, you can pretty much see what it comes with. We have a ton of different stuff. Now these two little clear things aren't actually screen protectors. They make the removal of your dash cam, if ever, that much easier. And you can, it says, please peel off the mask after application completed. They give you two of these and you mount it first, which I'll show you. And then you can peel, you can stick the dash cam on and remove it that much easier. And then we have the user manual and then everything you need right at the bottom here. So they give you a pry tool, which I already have, but this is cool too, because it'll make the installation process to hide everything, hide the wires that much easier. They give you another 3M adhesive in case you have to take it off again or put it on a different car. They give you the USB-C port here, which you can plug in. I'll show you that method as well as the wire that I need, which is right here. And then they have another one, another wire here, another USB-C. So if you use this and you decide you don't wanna have it, you know, hidden all within your car, this is shorter so that you can just have it straight down, you know, hanging from your dash. If you don't want that, you can then use this long, like six foot cable to actually hide it, which is what we're gonna do today. So I know this looks like a big confusing mess, which it kind of is, but fortunately everything here is labeled and we have the old wire there on the floor. And as you can see right over here, I have taped that wire, which you can see if I like tug it, well, this is it, you just take my word for it. But this wire here is the one that's all the way down there, which we're gonna have to replace with the new one that it came with. So using the old micro USB wire as a guide, I taped the new USB-C wire to it and fished it through the dash until it came out on the passenger side floor. Then I removed the passenger under trays and pulled the rest of the new wire through so that I had extra play to route it all the way up to the top of the car. Now I could then route that wire up through the dash behind the A pillar and then behind the headlighter trim until I had the end right where I wanted it. Now with this car, a light tug and the A pillar will literally come off. And lastly, I installed the easy remove plastic sheet and it was time to install the camera. So with the easy removal installed correctly, it's time to set up the dash cam, which involves the polarizer as well as our SD card, which is super simple and straightforward. So obviously there's lots of stuff on here that we need to remove first. First is this little lens cover, just like that, perfect. Then what we wanna do is open up the polarizer. And for those that don't know what a polarizer does is it removes glares off glass and water, which is a really cool feature for you know, the camera you're currently watching, as well as dash cam. So you wanna peel this off. Ooh, actually, I think there's another, there's another plastic cover. Now that that's all, now we can slide it over the camera. Okay, and we are good to go. The next thing we need to do is put the micro SD card in. We're more than likely gonna have to uh, format this, but we can do that once this has power going to it. We can slide the micro USB in, and now we're ready to mount this to the actual car. I peeled off the back sticker of the dash cam and mounted it to the windshield. Then I could tuck the rest of the wire away and out of sight, and then put the radio back together, completing the first way to hardwire a dash cam and make it look clean in your car. Now what's cool about Viofo is if you want additional security or extra security, you can pick up the dash cam hardwire kit. And the reason this is important is now, even with your car off, the dash cam will still be on and recording, which it currently is not. So depending on the safety you want, they offer a way around that. Now, the one thing about this is when you plug this in, it's going to be constantly drawing power from your battery, even when your car is off. And the workaround to that is if this thing has a computer chip in it that will shut off when your battery gets to a certain voltage, uh, it drops to a certain voltage, it will stop recording. And then when you turn your car back on and drive around, the alternator will charge your battery back up. But that's something to consider Consider. I don't want to have a constant draw on the car, so that's why I'm not going to be uh, using it. But this is another option. I'm going to show you how to set this up, even though I'm going to stick with my current uh, setup that we just uh, installed on the car. Now, when you get this kit, the only thing it really comes with besides the hardwire kit is, if I open this up, this is it. This and the uh, instruction manual. And as you can see here, it looks confusing. It's, it's really not at all. Uh, you have the USB-C 
cable, you have the really long cable. This way you can hide this and run it all the way to the dash cam. And then you have this, and this is where people probably get the most confused, but it's really simple and easy. What you have here is the voltage and you can set it with the switch to the what what you want on the voltage. Uh, the lowest goes down 11.8 to 23 volts and the highest is 12.4 to 24. So you can put it somewhere in the middle 12.2 or 12.4 and be safe which is furthest to the to the right. Uh, you can even leave it on the furthest to the right and that'll be totally fine. But the most confusing part that people get is these three wires and that's what you know I can see people get stuck on. You have, and it tells you, this is the battery plus. So this is constant power. You wanna find a power source within your fuse box that is constantly having power drawn to it. You have black, which is always ground, and you have yellow, which is accessory mode, which means when you turn the key and the car is not on, you can find another fuse that uh, has power going to it, going to a fuse when the key is turned on, but the ignition is off. And when the, ign and when the key is off and the car is, is left alone, there's no power going to it, if that kind of makes sense. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Now, in order to get this to work, I forgot to mention earlier, but you are gonna need to pick up a few more things, which I'll link in the description below, but you're gonna need some fuse taps and you're also gonna need some extra fuses and I'll show you why that's important. But for the time being, we need to wire this accordingly to, uh, to get to be able to use and piggyback off the fuses already in the car. Now, in order to figure out which fuse gets constant power going to it and which fuse only gets power going to it when in accessory mode, I have right here a fuse tester, which is actually really cool. You can pick this up on Amazon and I'll link this in the description below. But in order to test it first, you need to connect this to a ground, which is neatly convenient. We can just put this on right here. Don't get any easier than that. Now with the car off, if I go and touch this, we'll see on here which lights up and tells us it's having power. So as I touch this fuse, you can see I'm touching the little pin inside. No power means no power is going to it. Nothing lights up on my fuse tester, no power is going to it. But if I check this one, notice now I'm getting power, 12.7 volts. So this will be a good one to pull for our constant power, which is uh, pretty convenient. Now we could check maybe this top one we turn the car on and we'll get a better idea of which one to pull after. But as you can see, this isn't getting power. The top isn't getting power. The one over here, basically everything so far is not getting power in this row. This top row is, this one is, but everything pretty much in this bottom row, all of these do not get power. So that'll be good. We'll see which one of these light up here when in accessory mode, and we'll know which one has uh, power going to it. So turning the key into accessory mode and power is now going to it. it. Should be, yep, we're in accessory mode as you can see there. If we start touching some of these, we'll see which one has power going to it now. No power's going to this, no power. Up, oh, but power's going to fifth this one. So this one will be our ignition or our accessory mode, you can see. And then this one will be our constant power. So we know we're gonna be taking this fuse and this fuse out, and we can go onto our little assortment here and figure out which of those we need. And I believe those should be right here. These are the 15 uh, volt or the 15 amps, I believe, and see whether it says it or not. Yeah, 15 is right there. So we're gonna use two of these here. I almost forgot, but before you pull any fuses, it's important to remember to disconnect your battery first so that you don't short anything out or break anything in your car. So now that we know which two fuses to pull, we need to get the correct size fuse tap here. And sorry for sweating, it's freaking 95 degrees in Florida right now. But you can see we have these two fuse taps here. And what we're gonna do is crimp them. Now that we know the correct size, we're gonna crimp them each onto these. So we just slide this in here. We'll twist this real quick, slide it in. And then we take crimper because it's blue put it right here and we crimp this down. And as you can see, it's snug and the wire is not gonna come off. And we're gonna do the same thing to the red. Twist it up real good and then find the blue on here and crimp this as well. And just like that, it's not going anywhere and we're good to go and we're ready to take out our fuses and plug everything in correctly. Now sometimes removing these with your fingers is super tough. And if you go, in order to fix that, if you go to the engine bay under here, the other fuse box, they have this little clip tool 
which makes it so much easier to take these out. Watch this, you just slide it on like that and then you pull and check it out. It's that easy. So with the fuse unplugged, so you wanna put this in the lowest position, which is right here with the original just like this if it lets me there we go hard to do this one-handed just take my word for it that it fits there we go and now you want to take correct fuse from our kit and that goes at the top here then we're going to take this again and we're going to put this correct matching fuse in the top of our kit again and i'm going to have to do this off camera but while i do that we're also going to unplug the accessory one which is right here and that should be good. You can also see which ones actually have something going to them with a little silver in it. So with the correct fuses installed on here, we're going to put the constant power, which is, oops, the wrong one. Yeah, double check that. The constant power is red, goes right here, just like this, perfect. And then we're gonna put the yellow, which is accessory, right here. And then that's it. So now we have fuse tapped it. And now the last step is to connect our ground wire, which we can do real easily here. I think for me, that's a 10 millimeter. So we're gonna unscrew this real quick. And then I'll come back when I have this wire connected to it. So with our ground and our red for constant power and then our accessory when the car is on, we have completed this, which means we can go put the battery back on and then we can test out the dash cam. So with the battery plugged in and everything connected how it's supposed to be, if we follow this wire, you can see it routes all the way up to the dash cam. And you can see the dash cam is on and the lights are on even when the car is off. Now, obviously you can put this wire where you'd like. And if I was to keep this instead of doing my radio, then I would have wired this you know, through here like we did you know, and up and across like I did with this one. But just for right now to show you how easy it is, I just wired it like this. And you can see what's cool is you get these settings here, like I was trying to explain earlier, how low you'd like your battery to go before this shuts off. Cause this is gonna constantly drain your battery. So I have it set all the way to the right, which is 12.4 volts to 14.8 or 24.8. You can figure this out on your own car, but ideally what this means is if the battery gets to 12.4 or lower, it's gonna shut this from drawing power. This way you don't kill your battery and you'll be able to start it up in the morning. Um, and then obviously with your battery low, the alternator will charge your battery back up and you'll be good to go. But as you can see, this will be constantly on in case somebody hits your car when your car is parked and you're not there. So this is the solution if you were to wanna hardwire this that way. All right, so as you guys can see, the dash cam is mounted and everything is working. We now have to pretty much follow the instructions that it says on the camera. And as you guys can see, it says, do you want to format the card? Now all data will be deleted. So the answer is yes. It's gonna reformat the 64. So now everything should be, you know, up and running and recording good to go. And as you can hear, it's saying recording is started. If we want, we can press record and stop it from recording. And then we can click menu. And then you can see all the different menu options that is offered. As you can see, we have resolution, bit rate, loop recording, exposure. We can continue to go down. HDR, parking mode, enter parking mode timer, parking recorder, parking G sensor, motion detection, time lapse motion detection, GPS, disable GPS, G sensor, Wi Fi, date stamp, so on and so forth. For the time being, now that everything is up, and running correctly Recording here, started. as you guys can see. And I want to shut that sound off because that's super annoying. Now, let's say for whatever reason, you don't want to hardwire this and route it all the way around. It's too difficult. You don't want to spend the money on the tools and you just want to mount the dash cam. Well, how can you do it? The other way is you take their little USB that you can see here. You take the wire that I have, and then you can literally, you know, run it up to here. Now I would probably prefer to use the long wire instead of that. But this method works too. This is obviously too short for my car, but for others it might be perfect. But then you could literally pop this off. You know, we take this off right here. You can un undo this. However, it comes off, I forget, yep. And then you just connect it in like this. 
and you can mount this wherever you'd like. You want to put it up here, you can mount it right here and you'd be good to go or down here or over here if you want to mount it like this on your car or other people might, if it runs long enough, like I said, you could mount it right here and then in the settings of the camera, you can change this to record opposite and you'll be good to go. So guys, that's pretty much every way you can hardwire a dash cam and hide it and make it look really cool so you don't see any wires hanging there. I wanna give a huge shout out again to Viofo for sending me their newest A119 Mini 2 dash cam. It is sick, it is awesome. This is now my third Viofo dash cam. That is how much I recommend having them. And the second I moved, I had one in New York. And when I moved to Florida, I knew every car I had to own Every car I owned had to have a VOFO dash cam in it because of the amount of silly and obnoxiously oblivious drivers here in Florida. And I'll show you some of the dash cam footage because it's nuts what I've picked up on this dash cam. So make sure to check it out. Uh, if you want to pick one of these up, like I said, link is down in the description. Shout out to VOFO again. Um, but with that being said, if you like the video, smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, what the heck? All right, I guess we're not going to use that. Pull me closer.